In 1736, a young Benjamin Franklin established the first volunteer fire department before America had even declared independence. The first automatic sprinkler system was invented in 1872 and perfected a decade later. After 100 years, a smoke alarm came along, shortening the time for fire detection dramatically. Humans have created measures like these to protect those things that are most precious to us. Our homes, valuables, vital documents, irreplaceable relics, priceless memories. But today, many of our most precious items have moved online. So what do you do to stop digital fires? The code, viruses, malware, and suspicious links sent by arsonists that ignite with a click. You do what you've always done. You call in the experts, the people trained in putting digital fires out. When it's your job to keep billions of people safe online, you have to live and breathe and see the internet just like the attackers do. Because the only way to stop a hacker is to think like one. I think if you were to ask any of my coworkers, they would probably tell you that I uh, use fire department analogies a little overbearingly. Meet Matt Linton. He heads up a security response team at Google. If you asked him what his team does, he often starts at the very beginning. When I was a kid, I wanted nothing to do with computers as a career. I had a laser focus on emergency response. I got my EMT license at 16, technically before I got my driver's license. From there, I got my firefighting certification, my hazardous material certification, and I just kept going. Before coming to Google, Matt clocked over a decade conducting specialized rescue missions, responding to hazardous disasters, and fighting fires at NASA. Yep, NASA. But what does firefighting have to do with cybersecurity? A way that security at Google is an awful lot like fire department response. You have a fire department because even though we have fire sprinklers, fire alarms, fire inspections to prevent fires from breaking out, eventually protections fail and people make mistakes. You need people whose expertise and specialty is in responding to bad things once they've happened, specifically dealing with the problem at hand and not causing a lot of collateral damage. Just as communities have fire departments to protect those things that are most precious to us, Google has its own set of safety measures. The emergency responders, systems, and people who are responsible for protecting parts of our digital lives. They protect our childhood photos, cherished memories and family recipes, big ideas, blueprints and business plans, finances, customer lists and inventories, math homework, dissertations, that one thing you want no one seeing and the billions of things people and businesses use Google for every day. Now, how does someone begin to handle the pressure of defending all of that? I started cultivating bonsai trees. This is Royal Hansen. When he's not calming his nerves with the art of bonsai, he's running the entire privacy, safety, and security team at Google. Royal and his team are responsible for the security of every single Google user, which is something he doesn't take lightly. Your interaction with YouTube maps, websites and companies, it's literally the way you know and live your life day in and day out. There's an enormous responsibility on us to protect user data, keep it private, and keeping it private means keeping it safe. And to keep all that information safe, you need more than an ordinary fire department. Because, well... Right now, there are thousands of attacks being launched against Google and against Google customers. This is Fatima Rivera. She leads a team that specializes in detecting all those attacks. Every single one of them. Each with the potential to start a fire. There is no break. These attackers that are all over the world are highly skilled. It's their job. 24 seven to try to break into places like Google. Google is a target of attack by literally everybody. You probably remember Tim Wynn, 
Hi, this is Tim. How can I help? He may run one of Google's detection teams now, but he first got his feet wet during the single greatest digital fire ever to hit Google, Operation Aurora. All you really need is one hook, and you could do some real damage. And in January 2021, a group of digital arsonists started shooting sparks across the internet, trying to get a fire to ignite. The threat analysis group was watching closely. We started seeing North Korea, who, instead of targeting their normal targets, which is generally, you know, government and cryptocurrency, they were starting to directly trick security researchers. Out of all the possible targets to attack, the North Korean government took aim at the very people trying to keep the internet safe from attackers. So, how do you hack an expert? Well, you start with a convincing name. Nothing too generic. Ugh, too obscure. Yeah, Carter. Now what does Carter look like? There, that could be a Carter. Why don't you, you trust me? Hmm, let's put him at DEF CON. Oh, we can get along, we can get along. If only you trust in me. And there you have it. Meet Carter Edwards. They created fake social media profiles, some websites. They created what looked like a blog. Why don't you trust in me? Trying to sort of like build up this reputation so they look like a fellow security researcher. The North Korean government fabricated a security researcher out of nothing. But they didn't stop at Carter Edwards. There was James Willie, Billy Brown, Jung Guo, Piper Webster, North Korea built an entire army of fake security researchers and deployed them across the internet to become trusted members of the security community. The information security community is fairly small. When you gain some notoriety in the community, it's easier to get that hook into other people. When they were emailing or contacting these researchers, they'd start these conversations and they'd say, hey, come check out this great exploit I found. Can you help me look at it? And then what they would try and do, establish a rapport, talk about what they were working on. But this wasn't just water cooler small talk. These were calculated conversations about obscure topics that only security researchers care about. Tricking security researchers into visiting their website, and that website would have an exploit on it, and that would give them access to the researcher's machine. Guess what's on the researcher's machine? Really awesome security research. That research was highly coveted information, like vulnerability libraries and indexes of exploits. They were trying to find out how the locksmiths made their locks and how they could break them. And one of the last people you want having their hands on this kind of information is the North Korean government. If a security researcher was tricked, North Korea could gain unfettered access to the tools needed to steal user data, passwords, and personal information. They could cause real damage. North Korea as an actor is really scary because they have pretty good capabilities, but they have no restraint in how they use it. So when the threat analysis group noticed security researchers at Google might be a target, they had to investigate. I think we all took a pause and, and we knew we really have to answer that question of, is, is Google affected by this? When we investigated further, we found attacks against Google's security researchers. The North Korean attackers had been messaging Google researchers, and some even started to gain their trust. We had a conversation with the Googlers who potentially interacted with the attackers. We said, hey, have you seen this person? And we held up the milk jug. Have you talked to Piper Webster? Piper Webster, I don't know. How about John Guo? Nope. James Willie? I don't know James Willie. Billy Brown? Nope. But then. Yes, they had been interacting. A Google employee confirmed they'd been messaging one of the attackers, Carter Edwards. That's the spark. It's time to sound the alarm. I view us as a lot like the 911 system. We can be a full 24 hour, seven day a week, massive force against whatever it is that we're facing. Their first move, analyze the breach to understand what kind of fire they're dealing with. We do a complete forensic analysis on the workstation of the Googler. We have people that understand attack code. They reverse it. They provide us with signals that we can look for elsewhere. Who on the internet does this malicious code talk to? What domain names does it use? 
what does it do to the system while it's embedding itself. That initial breach allows them to identify the mechanics of the North Korean attack. But is this breach the only one? Or have the North Korean attackers found another way in? This is Alex Stamos. He's the director of the Stanford Internet Observatory, a research program devoted to studying safety online. Knowing the scope of Google's cybersecurity comes with a job. When you're defending millions of computers from tens of thousands of attackers, um, you have to have a huge amount of data at your fingertips, but then also the ability to sift through it really, really quickly. Google's detection response team has been at the forefront of using big data tooling to gather up petabytes and petabytes of security relevant data and to very quickly look for anomalies. Once we have indicators from that one laptop we've analyzed, we run what's called the fleet check, which is you know, checking literally every single machine for these types of indicators. Every single Google machine, every server, and every computer on Google's internal network. We find any other computer that has downloaded the same package, executed something similar to it, executed something from the same person, all of the ways that it possibly could have made its way into Google, we can look for all of those. They take all the evidence from the initial breach, the code signatures, domain names, and IP addresses, and run them through the automated systems that scan the entire Google network. From the billions of logs, we'll start to pattern match against our many thousands of signals. It actually really boils down to a very small number of what we call true positives. And that's where we see something bad happening. And from there, a human being will start to analyze and dig deeper. Watching analysts build a cohesive picture of what happened and when, it's like watching one of those professional Rubik's Cube solvers at work. It's just this jumble of garbage and then these nimble hands are working and then suddenly it's clear. There's this clear picture of what happened. They were gaining a foothold on a Googler's machine. We actually do find malicious code that the attacker has been serving to the Googler. We assume the worst case scenario. So there's definitely that moment of panic where you just don't know. It's all the unknown. But you have to reel yourself in. You really cannot think properly and take the right steps if you're panicked. Sparks are starting to catch. The North Korean government has compromised a second machine. These hackers are fast and precise. If they get further inside Google, who knows what they could do. It's time to start putting this fire out. This calls for precision and firefighting teamwork. Wasted seconds could prove fatal. The next step is to hunt for where you know, the attacker may, may still be on the network. Part of that is not letting the attacker know that you're onto them. The one thing we don't do is we don't start to shut down machines right away. We don't want them to pivot. We don't want them to use an, a different attack technique than what we know. So the goal when we're hunting them down is that we're keeping up pace and really luring them into a position that allows us to block them out in one step. Once we're certain about where they've been, that's when we start to act in ways that are visible to the attacker. We're gonna box them in. We'll start to try and cut off their connections and then we yank the rug out from them all at once, all within the same short period of time by a group of people acting in concert. They patch every hole the attackers have made. Sometimes that's all it takes to seal them off. But in the case of an advanced threat, like the North Korean government. The only way to assure that a threat does not exist anymore is by actually having a fresh installation on that machine. We have to burn it all down to the ground and start from scratch. Burn it down. Why take the risk that you missed a backdoor? I don't like burning things down because it's really disruptive. It's a bad day for everybody. I love it. <laughs> and just like that, the North Korean attackers were kicked out of Google. A campaign that waged for weeks was foiled by the detection and response team in just a few hours. Only two computers were compromised, no users were affected, and thankfully, they weren't able to cause any damage. That's a good moment when you realize that everything that you have put in place, all the hard work, that it just pays off. And to really seal the deal, we were able to make sure we take the tools and the indicators and roll them back into our detection pipeline. Every piece of evidence, the URLs, domain names, and code signatures from the North Korean attack were loaded back into Google's detection system. With every fire the team puts out, Google's defenses become stronger. 
the difference between a, a company that can protect itself versus the ones that can't is having a team that is constantly responding um, and assuming that the attackers are on the inside instead of just building a hard outside shell and pretending that that's good enough to keep people from getting in. But these responders don't just answer the call when Google's own walls are threatened. The teams and sophisticated tools protecting against the North Korean attackers are the same ones protecting you and your data. Every year, the amount of data created, the amount of digital journeys that a consumer will have on the internet have just exploded, and with it, the opportunity for hacking. The North Korea attack, it really reiterated to me the importance of our mission. If you interact with Google in any way, we are here to keep your information, your data safe from those that would sometimes wish to do you harm. We really do care about your data being protected so much that we have the fire department for your systems and your data. And we're always on duty. My team likes to set stuff on fire. The red team are my favorite enemies. We basically take the role of an attacker and hack into Google. The car companies crash their cars and make sure they're safe. So do we. They would see you for like about a tenth of a second. A black window flash up on the screen and that is that. Yes, we're in. 